honestly, I didn't have much expectations for the first Elite Series event in Europe this weekend, but my goodness, was it one of the best events we had all year, and a totally other surprise that I'll talk about at the end of the video, which concluded three upsets in one weekend. My goodness, disc golf's awesome. With that, let's get into it. Look at this man coming from the States. And be sure to subscribe as I try to reach my goal of getting 10,000 subscribers by Worlds. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate it. So first off, there was two events, basically, that happened this weekend, the Copenhagen Open and LVC. But with that said, there was a lot of attention on Copenhagen Open, and that is because the culture in Denmark really is just so much more lively than any event we saw in the entire duration of this year so far. With the first round having way more people than the major at Champions Cup. And while it was free entry, I still think the location is just so perfect and it really allows so many people to congregate to one centralized place without having to do a long drive. And I think all that's made into having a perfect event with a bunch of crowds and great scenery. And along with that, there was great broadcasters and it just feels so refreshing to get new players that we don't know that that much about. We obviously know the big names, we know Niklas and a couple of the other players, but for the most part it is new players that we don't get to hear all that much about. And I feel like when you have so many people cheering on every shot, it just adds that much more impact to the entire tournament as a whole. And I found myself caring a lot more because the people cared, the commentators cared, everybody added so much importance to this entire event and I really wish we would get to see that in the US, but honestly it's just not there yet. Now with that said, the one thing that I did not like nearly as much was the course. So many holes felt like holes that I could birdie, which is just kind of a weird feel for what is an elite series. But with that said, still very fun and I really enjoyed the scenery, especially the uniqueness of it that I just don't really see anywhere else on tour. So even if the holes were a little bit easy, it still was a very fun watch throughout the entire way through. So with that said, let's move on to how it all finished. And I will save the crazy FPO finish for the back half. So first up, MPO. Honestly, I thought Nicholas was gonna run away with it and it wouldn't even really be close. That was very much not the case with a very slow front nine to start the entire event. Shooting even after 10 holes, it really was just not looking good. But then Nicholas came in clutch as ever, shooting an eight under after that point scoring nine out of 10 birdies on the back 10 holes. But along with that, he had some insanely good circle two putts that allowed him to have that insane back nine, which included a 45 footer and a 52 footer. And with that momentum, I thought he was back. I thought he was going to kind of like totally shred, but especially with this course that has so many holes are very gettable. That's just not the way it panned out, finishing each round with 10 under, but just had a couple of unlucky holes, only makes one circle two putt in those two rounds and has one hole going out of bounds. He just didn't have quite enough to finish with the lead, and still an overall good event for him. Next up, Yuli. We definitely still know he has what it takes to play great, but I would not say he has that many good opportunities to take down an event, especially having three good rounds. But with that said, it looked like he might have a potential to take it down, but in very much uncharacteristic fashion, he misses four circle one putts from holes six to ten, putting him well out of contention, even though he had some great drives, and obviously he had some great putting throughout the entire tournament, just ultimately had a couple of bad holes, which really lost him all the momentum he had going into it. So with that, he finishes in fourth place. And before we get to the champion, there are two 16 year olds that finished top four. The first one being Roland Kaur from Estonia, who has had some great events, who recently won the Open at Spain. Uh, probably not an event you know too much about, but he shot 1047 with a final round of 1064, beating out second place, which was Philo by 12 strokes. So we obviously know he is a very good player. And while I did not see too much of him on the broadcast, overall, he still had a great finish, even though he is not finished, he's Estonian. And I think much like the other 16 year old, I think his game was really clean. There really wasn't too much to point out that was bad. And shooting three out of five circle two putts really is a great accomplishment, especially when you have all that stress on you. But shooting just one stroke better than Roland is E2 Twomanen. Hope I said that right. And besides a slow start, starting out with a bogey, it really looked like he had potential to take it down. His entire final round was just totally electric and jamming in a back to back circle two putt with a 49 footer and a 45 footer in round two. And then, oh yeah, getting a 60 footer par save on hole five and in the final round and then following that up on the next hole with a 36 footer he had 100 percent putting in the final round and finishes the event with six circle two putts and honestly it felt at many times that he was playing better than nicholas not as good as the first place player but still playing so strong throughout the entire final round that it never looked like nerves were really part of the issue but let's move to the first place finisher i'm sure i'm going to butcher this yesay nieminen who is actually from the exact same town as nicholas so i assume they're pretty good friends i'm not entirely sure 
He shot near perfection in round two with a 13 under, 1071 rated, and it looked like nobody was really gonna catch up to him. But besides an early couple of birdies, but it looked like he might falter because he didn't really look super confident, and especially from hole three to eight, nothing was really clicking for him, and it looked like he was really losing strokes. But then he went off on a six birdie stretch, which included two 42 footers, putting him well above the rest and basically just needing a birdie or two to finish in first place. And he does exactly that, getting him his first Elite Series win with two strokes ahead of Nicholas and E2. All in all, a very, very good showcase from him. Even if the competition wasn't the most deep, this is still a very good finish and it is an Elite Series, so it definitely counts. And overall, it's just so exciting to see everyone battle, especially these tight holes where it's like, I gotta get birdie every single hole. I don't know, the last four holes, I was try just trying to keep it cool. Like, I have been in these positions way too many times and lost most of them. So, to be honest, I was kind of preparing myself at, that I do something dumb, like usually. But then we move on to the craziest event I think I've ever seen in FPO. And that is because it was a battle between Kaide Alsalu and Evelina Saladin. And if you know anything about Evelina, which I'm sure you do, the uh, potential for failure in final rounds really is always there. Even if we have this new Evelina, who doesn't really show many signs of weakness, especially in these recent events, you still kind of expect it. And after a triple from Evelina to start the round, it looked pretty not good. And with a nine stroke deficit after hole five, where Evelina took a bogey, it looked like Alsalu basically could just coast on in and get her victory. But stress being what it is, that is very much not what played out and it is so insanely crazy how it all ended. So after hole five, Evelina goes on an absolute tear, going seven under after hole five, which like I mentioned, she was nine strokes back of Alsalu. And while I can't say I know that much about Alsalu, she was looking so confident, especially on the putting throughout the entire first couple of rounds. And I really thought she was gonna take it home like it wasn't gonna be close with a bunch of bad par saves, bad drives, and honestly just terrible looking putts. Her entire game kind of fell to pieces, getting three bogeys between hole seven and 11. And then basically parring out besides a birdie on hole 18, which is a par six, kind of interesting. And overall, while she did miss six circle two putts, she still had some great putting, making nine out of 12 from circle one, but just ultimately did not string any birdies together in that back half, which allowed Evelina to get to hole 18 in striking distance. Basically, if Evelina could just get an eagle, then it could go to a playoff because Alsu was almost certainly gonna get a birdie or better with the very forgiving hole 18. So after a very good drive, very good upshot, and very good second upshot from Evelina, she had an eagle look, which basically nobody had the entire weekend. But Evelina is a shredder and she is just outside circle one and also has a 15 footer for an easy birdie. So basically Evelina had to jam in the circle two putt, which we know Evelina does not do very much, if at all. And even though her putter is looking better by the day and she had already jammed in a 42 footer in hole six, it still feels so very uncharacteristic for Evelina to hit a circle two putt, especially in these critical moments. But that is exactly what she did with an insane stepper, jammed it in. Honestly, it felt so reminiscent of James Proctor, and I'm just so sure that she learned some stuff from James Proctor. But all in all, just such a hype moment. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. Probably one of the most hype I think I've ever seen Evelina. She was just like, what the heck? I actually made it, let's go. <laughs> and just going back six holes, she three putted on hole 12. So like her putter is still not good, but this level of confidence coming from her really is just feeling so refreshing and so exciting. So with that, we go into a playoff, which for some reason is only two holes. I'm not really sure about that, but yeah, two holes. Uh, first hole, both people went super OB, and I would say both of them did not look very confident. But with that said, Evelina did almost ring it up from the drop zone, which would have been an insanely cool way to end it, but not the way it panned out. So we go on to hole two, and Evelina threw a good shot, but not really a great shot, 36 feet out, and also threw a much better shot, but still like around 25-ish feet. So definitely missable putts from both these people, but I would say definitely advantage goes to Alsalu. But with this being like the new era of Evelina, there is still just like this feeling of confidence coming from her 
and she's like slightly pinched off but that almost makes it better because she has less of like an expectation of making the putt and my goodness does another stepper and I feel like this is just such a crazy occurrence but she jams it in getting the birdie from 36 feet absolutely madness everyone goes crazy and then all slew just has to make the putt and we go on to a third hole but ultimately that does not happen she chains out and we get the third tour win from Evelina this year just so unbelievably hype i cannot believe it with a nine stroke deficit on hole five i have had so many moments where i thought she could take down events but like she chokes she loses all the confidence but here she did not she was so dialed in so focused and i'm so hyped for it and i forgot to mention a hole 18 she like had to power through a branch it really didn't even look like a great shot but it bounced just enough over the basket bounces up into the chains and it really just felt like we are in the new era of Evelina. the moments of her choking are few and far between and her putting still is not great but her ability to have so many good drives really has so many implications to continuing her stretch of dominance and one crazy stat is that she is tied for Kristen with total tour wins, which includes one major, which Kristen does not have. Definitely did not have that on my list for 2024, but I am so hyped for it, and I bet everyone else is too. But like I said in the title, there are three upsets this weekend, so let's get to the last one, MPO at LVC. And honestly, by the time this video goes out, uh, the uh, round will not even be live, so I'm going purely off stats but still I had to talk about it because it is just so hype. All right, so LVC, again, not that big an event now, just an A tier, but there are so many good pros coming to it, and this is a full round event. And after round two, it looked like it was just kind of like a runaway where Gannon Burr was gonna just totally dominate with a seven stroke lead, but then Gannon has a very lackluster round three, losing seven strokes to Calvin and three strokes to Connor Rock, who is definitely not a name I have on my radar all that often. I can't say I know too much about him. He's from Arizona, 10, 12 rated, and he finished 14th at LVC last year and 25th at Jonesboro this year and so while I was thinking it was going to be a battle between Gannon and Calvin uh, that is just not what happened so Calvin needed to really show up in the final round which he did except for some blow up holes gets three bogeys finishes eight under losing five strokes behind the leader and then Gannon Burr basically has the exact same round just one stroke better with nine under which usually would have been good enough and he would have been taking it down Gannon Burr wins another A tier but that is not the case a new king is in town Connor Rock a name again that I've not heard much about but he shows up very strong here gets a 1080 round with 14 under actually tied Bradley Williams for the hot round of the day which is crazy for Bradley good stuff for him but he wins by one stroke over Gannon Burr beating so many good players <laughs> taking down LVC by one stroke so hyped for him absolute madness I really cannot believe this but to have a 10 12 rated player get a final round of 1080 to win is just so insanely hyped and I am very excited to see if we get more of him on tour because this is just awesome. Uh, so with that, I don't really have anything else to say. Very excited about all this stuff. Be sure to subscribe. I have a lot more exciting stuff coming and I'm so excited for the European stretch. It has been a long time coming where we get some new feeling events and a new swath of players that really does add such a nice appeal to tour. And I think it is so refreshing. So with that said, what do you guys think about Copenhagen Open and LVC? Uh, do you not really care about LVC anymore? Personally, I don't really care. But with that, Wild Runs signing out. Peace.